Only five games on tonight's slate for MLB DFS, and as a result, stacking is pretty difficult. As good as I felt about last night's stacks, I feel equally uneasy about tonight's because we're going to stack against some pretty decent pitchers in order to get exposure to good offenses. And I think that's the right sacrifice to make, the right trade-off, but unsure. For sure. So we're going to dive in and let you know what those stacking options are, where to go at pitcher, and more to get you ready for Thursday night. Welcome on into the solo shot. That's right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and NumberFire.com. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for NumberFire, here to break down Thursday night's five-game main slate with locks up for 6.05 p.m. Eastern for today. Again, lock is at 6.05 p.m. Eastern and early lock time for today, so... Make sure you are aware of that as you're filling out your lineups. If you got dummy lineups in there, edit them now to get some kind of thing in there uh, just to make sure you are good to go before 6.05 p.m. Eastern. Luckily for us, with just five games, no weather notes for tonight. I'm not sure the status of the air quality in Philadelphia because apparently we got to worry about that now as well. But at least from a rain perspective, no games at risk of being postponed for today. We'll dive on in and break down pitchers, stacks, and much more in just one second. But first, a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed wherever you get your podcasts. And also, do not forget that the solo shot does go up over on the FanDuel YouTube page each and every weekday. If you like what you hear on YouTube, leave us a thumbs up. And make sure you're subscribed to the FanDuel YouTube page. If you like what you're on the podcast side, leave Leave us a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts or over on Spotify, where you can rate podcasts as well. Have you ever started a player in your fantasy football lineup who scores three points while someone on your bench puts up 20? Well, with FanDuel's NFL Best Ball Drafts, you don't have to worry about that. Draft your team, and each week, the highest-scoring lineup from your roster will be used as you battle for first place all season long. Leagues can be free to play or for money and range from three to 12 players. The NFL season will be here before you know it. So head over to FanDuel today and get in on the action. Age and residency restrictions apply. Pitching preview for this Thursday main slate. Spencer Strider comes in with the highest salary on FanDuel. His salary is $11,400, followed by Framber Valdez at 11-1. Zach Wheeler is at 10-8 with Justin Verlander at 94. Then we have Jose Barrios, Aaron Savalli as the other guys at 8 thousand dollars or higher now at the top of the slate i think you can make a case for either spencer strider or zach wheeler as being the top guy because strider is strider and wheeler is facing the tigers so they're both defensible but for me i'm gonna go strider at the top because it's spencer strider we'll talk about wheeler and the reason i prefer strider in just one second but first let's discuss strider here he is facing the mets which is definitely not a fun matchup. They have a 103 WRC plus against righties. They don't strike out a bunch, but I'm not sure it matters for Strider because we are up to 12 starts for him this year. And he has an expected ERA of 2.70 with a 41% strikeout rate. That is DeGrom levels of nastiness. Strider is letting up too many fly balls and too much hard contact, but I reference the expected ERA because that does a better job of encapsulating hard contact and fly balls. And he's still been fine there. 2.70 more than good enough. He's still been feasting. He has not faced the Mets since May 1st. So minimal familiarity issues here. Strider's had double digit strikeouts in four out of 12 games. He's had nine and five others. It is an absurd run because of the matchup. His strikeout projection is quote unquote, just nine strikeouts but it's still the most in the slate by a wide margin. So I want strikeouts. I want to get as many of those as I can into my lineup. Strider is the guy who best does that. So for me, he's the top guy. Wheeler can go second though. And the matchup is what does it there. And it's what puts him even in the discussion with Strider. He's facing the Tigers. Wheeler is, and they have a 70 WRC plus against righties, which is easily the worst number on the slate. They have a 102 ISO, which means they have no power at all. And they also strike out enough with a 24% right there. And Wheeler does get strikeouts himself too. He's a 27% this year. And that ranks third on the slate behind Spencer Strider and Framber Valdez. And Wheeler has done this while doing his typically solid job of also keeping hard contact in check. So the question you should be asking, I would think, is why would I put Strider above Wheeler given the respective matchups these two guys have? And to me, I think that the matchup or the the strikeout gap between these two guys 
is tough to bridge. Even though Wheeler ranks third in strikeout rate on the slate, his strikeout rate is still 13 percentage points lower than Strider's. Even with Strider in a low strikeout matchup, he's still projected for 2.2 more strikeouts than Wheeler, which means he kind of gets more wiggle room to let up some hard runs and still be the highest scoring guy in the slate. So I like Wheeler a lot. If Strider were not in the slate, I would put Wheeler at the top and feel great about it. But with Strider being here with all the strikeout upside he has, I have to go Strider one, Wheeler two. But if you want to push back and go Wheeler, there is a very easy case you made for that. I totally get it. Just my personal preference. My personal process says I should go Strider. So I'll be doing that for tonight. So to me at the top, Strider one, Wheeler two, Framber Valdez, very much the third pitcher for today. As far as the value play goes, I'm going to wind up on Jose Barrios. I don't feel great about that. I'm still pretty wary of a lot of what's happening in his profile, and I don't want to target pitchers facing the Astros. But for $8,800, he's the lowest I can go, so Barrios will be the value play of the night. We've seen Barrios pitch a lot better recently, at least from a results perspective, and it has correlated with a changes approach where across his past five starts, he's thrown fewer forcing fastballs. And in that time, his ERA is 2.03, and three of those games were on the road, and he's had some in his career, decent home road splits. So seeing him do decent on the road to me is pretty encouraging. And it's fun to have Jose Barrios back to being a viable option for fantasy. But the strikeouts haven't been there. He has a 21% strikeout rate in the sample. He's getting by entirely by suppressing hard contact. In that time, in that five-star sample, Barrios has let up just a 25% hard hit rate, which is a very good number. But the question is whether or not it's sustainable. Or will Barrios need to get more strikeouts to keep this really nice run he's had up? And honestly, the answer is, I don't know. Um, Houston's lineup should be pretty righty heavy, which does help for sure. But the downside is what the who those two lefties are. They're Jordan, Jordan Alvarez and Kyle Tucker. If he faces both those guys twice, that could be four home runs based on the way they hit the ball based on Barrios' issues with the lefties. So it's concerning still. I do think Barrios is in play. I think if you want to use him to get to Mike Trout and guys like that, I get it. Uh, but I think my approach tonight would be to spend up a pitcher in most lineups. I think I'd rather try to find value within my stacks and go that route instead because it just kind of kind of tough for me to envision Barrios outscoring um, Strider, outscoring Wheeler, given his matchup and all that stuff. So um, definitely going to wind up paying up more than I pay down a pitcher for today. Now, one reason we can get to Strider for tonight is that I think that the Cubs are very much in play and they've got a lot of potential value options on their roster. So let's talk about the Cubs here as the top stack. And they're facing Reed Detmers. So this is a very risky stack because Detmers can get strikeouts and the Cubs are more than happy to oblige people in getting strikeouts. But I still think we'll want to be here. I think that you could make a case for Detmers as being a value option at pitcher if you wanted to, because he actually does rank pretty high in my strikeout projections for this slate. So there is plenty of downside here, but the upside is nice. And that's why we're here for the top stack. The Cubs have a 118 WRC plus against lefties. They have a 40% fly ball rate and Detmers has had some bad at ball issues, which is why his expected ERA this year is 4.48. That you get there when your hard hit rate allowed is 43%. That's the main issue for Detmers is the hard contact. He is also walking too many guys, not getting enough ground balls. So I think Detmers is a better pitcher than a ZRA would say at 5.15, but it's also not entirely fluky. I think we should stack the Cubs here, even without, uh, even with the obvious risk that Detmers could mow them down, rack up a lot of strikeouts. Again, he's semi in play as a pitcher too. So it's a risk for sure, but it's one I think we might need to take given the composition of this slate. Within the Cubs, again, I think their key appeal outside of the bat of balls is the salaries because they've got a lot of guys with lower salaries who are in play. We talked about Jan Gomes earlier on this week. He's $2,600. Seiya Suzuki is still at uh, $2,900. So you've got some guys here for sure who are very much viable with low salaries. I'd want to include Miguel Amaya in that discussion as well. His salary is minimum $2,000. He hit sixth on Tuesday night against the lefty. Started this year down in double A, hit the cover off the ball there. 
went up to AAA, performed well there too. And now he's at least making hard contact in the majors as well. So I'm not going to be as enthused about Amaya if he hits eighth, which he very well could do for tonight. But if he's a bit higher than that, even like seventh or so, I think he's worth a spin at the minimum. So between Amaya, Gomes, Suzuki, guys like that, I think the Cubs are a good value stack for tonight. And in addition to the fact that they should get a decent amount of hard contact. So the Cubs to me are going to wind up being the top stack of the night. The number two stack is on the other side of this game. That's the Los Angeles angels. And they're facing Drew Smiley. Smiley got off to a great start this year. He had that uh, almost perfect game. His expected ERA for the full season is still 3.29. So he's been awesome. Legitimately awesome. But he is starting to come back to earth a bit. We've had six starts on Smiley since his velocity started to stabilize. And in those six starts, his skill interactive ERA is 4.57. He is letting up a 43% fly ball rate. And the reason that he has been okay as far as the results go is that he is still keeping, he is still suppressing our contact, but walking a very thin line where if that number does go up a bit, he could get into some very serious trouble. And it's especially true against this lineup. Now, no Hunter Renfro. He's on the paternity list, so congrats to him. Um, but the Angels active roster, a 119, a WRC plus against lefties, that they're pretty good. And again, I think that's a key appeal of the Cubs and the Angels in this slate is they're actually good offenses facing pitchers who can let up some fly balls and hard contact. That's kind of really all it boils down to. So on a bigger slate, I would not sack against Smiley. I think that he's, well, again, legitimately decent. But in this situation, I think it does make sense. Again, just trying to take advantage of all the fly balls and a good offense with the Angels for tonight. It does kind of seem like Taylor Ward may finally be coming around because since Memorial Day, his ISO is 256. He has a 48% fly ball rate with an 11% barrel rate. Now he's facing a lefty. I know Ward hasn't had amazing numbers against lefties always in his career, despite being a righty, but I think we can feel much better about Ward now than we did earlier on this year. His salary, $2,900. So again, you combine that with the Cubs and getting to Mike Trout at 36, who uh, had a home run last night, getting to potentially show Itani, despite it being a lefty at 39. I think that's realistic. So I can get there with Strider for today, and I'd like to do so. And that does make me feel better about spending up a pitcher uh, for tonight. For the third stack, I'm going to go with the Red Sox. I'm not a fan of this personally. I like Aaron Savali, and he looked awesome in his first start off the IL, but I like this more than the alternatives, which should tell you a lot about the stacking options for tonight. So kind of just here by default, Savali in that first start back allowed just three hard hit balls, and he was getting a ton of strikeouts during his rehab stint at AAA too. But Savali let up too much hard contact last year with a 40% hard hit rate allowed. That's why his ERA was 4.92, despite some decent underlying numbers. Savali has not done that this year as far as the hard contact goes, but it's still a very small sample. His swing and strike rate is 7.9%, and the Red Sox are a good offense. Their ISO of 169 ranks third on the slate. So, no, I don't really want to stack against Savali, but on this slate, I do think it makes sense. So... The Red Sox will be the number three stack here behind the Cubs and the Angels. I think it makes enough sense to go here, despite the fact it makes me kind of sad to stack against Aaron Savali. Within the Red Sox, again, I think we can find some value to make it easier to get up to Strider, Trout, etc. Tristan Costa is kind of the key guy here. His salary is $2,600. He's batting fifth. I think the bad results for him are pretty fluky because his Woba is 306, but his expected Woba is 340. A lot of barrels, a lot of fly balls. I keep trying to buy into Casas, hoping to get in for the breakout, and it has not happened yet, but I think there are at least signs that it could come. So I like Casas a lot. Uh, $2,600, a very fair salary for a guy who has legitimate power. Jaron Duran has slowed down a lot recently, but the salary has also come down. Uh, it's now $2,800. So I think we've got guys with upside here on this team and uh, not super, super high salaries, which does make the Red Sox helps make up for the fact that I don't really want to stack against the Valley for tonight. Things to watch on this slate. I did give at least some consideration to Justin Ver Justin Verlander at $9,400. He's still not himself like old school Verlander, but he did go 117 pitches in his most recent start, which is bananas. 
which gives you a lot of wiggle room for him to not be spotless, but still be good for DFS. He's facing the Braves in the road. It might not be the right spot to buy back in yet. So I'm not there now, but it's at least worth thinking about uh, for his next spot in the rotation. If you want to watch him tonight and see how he does and get a, a read on next week, I think that makes a lot of sense. The other two stacks I considered above the Red Sox were the Guardians and the Phillies. Let's start here with the Phillies, who will be facing, I think, Reese Olsen, though it'll be behind an opener. They have not confirmed Olsen will be the bulk reliever for the Tigers, but I think he will be. Olsen, both in his Major League debut and in AAA, has done a very good job of limiting hard contact. He gets ground balls, gets some swinging strikes. The Phillies' offense is solid. And that's why they're a consideration here. But Olsen might just be good. And it did lower me on stacking against him for tonight. The Guardians got dinged because their offense stinks. And I don't want to stack them. They're facing Matt Dermody, who is making his 2023 debut. Decent play discipline numbers down in AAA. He was not as good at suppressing our contact as Olsen. But the Guardians are not fun. 86 WRC plus against lefties. Minimal power, 125 ISO. Still, they're fine for one-offs if there are guys you like on this team, but I don't feel confident in finding four guys I like in this offense. So that's why they got shoved down. The Red Sox got shoved up. It's a weird slate for stacking for sure. So if you have a a strong inclination towards someone else in the slate, I'd say follow it. There are no surefire stacks in the slate, no perfect stacks by any means. So follow your gut. This is what my gut said, uh, was the angels, Cubs and Red Sox followed by the Phillies. And then, uh, the guardians for some one-offs let's finish up here with some dinger calls for today. Now, last night we got, uh, both dinger calls in the first inning of the same game. We're going to try to run that back. First inning might be a stretch. And also one of these guys might not play, but I'm going to go Mike Trout for the boring one back to back nights. We'll say for Mike Trout, uh, going deep there. The fun one, Miguel Amaya, If he does not play, pivot to Jan Gomes as being uh, the fun home run call. Gomes, we talked about this again earlier on this week. Still, it's lefties very well. Amaya is just kind of fun. Minimum salary and fan duel. So tentatively, the homer calls are Mike Trout and Miguel Amaya. If Amaya does not go, backup then is Jan Gomes instead. That is all that we have here for today on the solo shot. Want to give you all a big thank you for tuning on, tuning in once again, as always, we are back once again tomorrow with a robust Friday slate. So make sure you're subscribed to the number fire daily fantasy podcast feed or the FanDuel YouTube page to get these as they go live. If you've got any questions for me, I am on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J I M S A N N E S. I want to thank you all for tuning in. Good luck to you with your MLB DFS lineups for tonight. We'll talk to you once again tomorrow to break down Friday's slate. This has been the solo shot right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network.